In this experiment, we're going to be demonstrating Brewster's angle. We're also going to be demonstrating how light can be polarized through the process of reflection. Normally, when light uh, is unpolarized, uh, it travels in two components, a, a perpendicular component and a parallel component. Uh, as described in the lab write-up, um, perpendicular component, if light is, for example, coming from this laser, the perpendicular component tra tra travels in this direction here. And when it strikes the surface, it will be reflected uh, according to this convention. Parallel light, on the other hand, is rotated this way. Okay? And when it travels, it strikes the surface and is reflected uh, in this manner. Now, the reflectivity of a material depends on the polarization of the light. Perpendicular light, light traveling this direction, is reflected differently than light that is parallel polarized in this direction here. And what we're going to do in this experiment is demonstrate how at a, a certain angle, Brewster's angle, 100% um, of the parallel light will be absorbed, or tra not absorbed, but transmitted into the material, uh, leaving zero light uh, left over for reflection. And this is one way that light is can be polarized. Uh, typically in laser tubes, for example, the installation of Brewster windows on the ends of a laser cavity. Uh, if we position at, at the appropriate angle those windows, when light bounces back and forth between those two uh, the end mirrors of a laser, uh, for every pass through those mirrors, a certain percentage of light is stripped off and eventually the light becomes polarized. Now in the lasers that are included in your kit, the light is linearly polarized and it's typically polarized in the vertical direction. Uh, so to do this demonstration, if you notice here, we have this laser laying on its side and the reason for that is the light is vertically polarized coming out of this laser. So if, it was, if this laser was straight up and down, light would be traveling in the perpendicular component and the perpendicular component does not extinguish. Okay? It is reflected off the surface and there is no angle at which the reflectivity is zero. So in order to simulate the parallel component of light, what we've done is we've rotated the laser on, it, laser on its side so that we do have the parallel component. Now the parallel component of the polariza polarization of the light will travel, reflect off the, this piece of plexiglass um, that we've uh, placed on a, on a mount here and will be reflected in this direction. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this stage and look for the appropriate angle, Brewster's angle, such that the reflectivity of the laser beam goes to zero. So in order to set this up, okay, what I've done is I've placed this piece of plexiglass, and you can use any type of reflective surface, plexiglass, glass, whatever you have hanging around. Um, but I placed it on the platform so that this reflective surface is right in the center of the platform. And by looking in the camera is at, a, at an angle where you can't really see the reflected light back. But what I've done is I've oriented the, the block so that the reflection goes directly back into the laser. That way I know that I'm starting out at zero degrees relative to the angle of incidence. Okay, and what we're going to do in this experiment is I'm going to rotate this stage and then we're going to look for the reflected light on, on this um, backdrop and we're going to find the angle that the light extinguishes it. Now as you can see here, if we can focus in on this spot here, we actually see two beams of light. And the reason for that is we have a front reflection and the back reflection off the particular piece of optic that I, I've selected. And what we're going to be looking at is this first beam here. Okay? This second beam is due to the back reflection and eventually as I rotate this it will um, be eliminated just through the, through the process of total internal reflection. Um, but what I'm going to do is rotate the stage now and we're going to observe the intensity of this spot here, okay, the first spot. So I'm rotating, I'm rotating, rotating, and as I'm rotating, you're going to notice there goes the reflected, uh, the back reflected beam. So all we have left is the front reflected beam now. The intensity of that beam is dropping off considerably. Okay, around this, around this spot here. Okay, and as I pass through that spot it actually starts getting brighter again. 
Okay, so what you want to do is go back and find the point at which the intensity has dropped to a minimum level. Okay, and right about there is about the lowest I can make the intensity of the reflected spot uh, appear. Now, in an ideal situation, what we would uh, experience here is no light at all. You would see the light coming from over here. Okay, it would actually diminish, 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 and then it would go away. And as we pass through that point there, it would start coming back. The point at which you get the minimum reflected light, or zero reflected light in the perfect world, is Brewster's angle. Okay? Now, in this particular situation, the reason that it's not completely extinguished is that uh, the laser itself being placed on its side may not be exactly um, parallel to the surface of the optic that's doing the reflecting. It also may be uh, a function of the exact orientation of the light as it leaves the laser. Some lasers may have the light skewed, you know, a couple degrees either way. So unless this strikes this at, a, you know, exactly 90 degrees to the surface, okay, you know, you may get a little bit of the perpendicular component included in your reflected beam. But what I'm going to do now is just look at the scale on the side of the translation stage, and right now I am reading 56 degrees. That is Brewster's angle for this particular block. And if you go back into your lab write-up, uh, there's an equation for Brewster's angle that states that uh, Brewster's angle theta is equal to the arc tangent of the index refraction of the glass, or the plexiglass, uh, divided by the index refraction of air, which in this case is 1. And just doing a simple calculation uh, on the back of an envelope, uh, it turns out that the index refraction of this piece of plexiglass turned out to be uh, about 1.428. Um, so that, in a nutshell, concludes the experiment on Brewster's angle for reflection.